You're putting words into my mouth, and I don't like it. Film that when he's telling you things like that. I don't really want to be filmed talking about this. Lies, lies, the chief inspector yeah. promised. Fuck off media! 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 I know it's out of car park. We say fight back. I know it's out of car park. We say fight back. My year filming protests started at the end of 2010. We have to make a statement. We're showing that we don't. We're not having it. Nine grand. We're not having it. The eyes to the right, 323. The nose to the left, 302. It felt like the students had lost not only the fees vote, but something else too. Order. There was a sense of inevitability while filming the student protests. A feeling of taking part in a three-way dance between the cameras, the police, and the kettle protesters. The most dramatic pictures would become the story, and a real understanding of what the events were about was missed. This fight is not over. It's the beginning. By the new year, it felt like the end of the beginning. Can I ask you how many people showed up? Uh, I think it was about 25. Whatever this may look like now, that's inherent. If you look at his, historically, the history of working class struggle and fight back, there, it ebbs and flows. There will be sparks that turn into flames and fires, and then that will momentarily die down again to sparks. This is a budget built on sound money. The next spark came in March. Trade unions were trying to form a coalition of their own to stop the cuts. The brilliant thing about this is it's everyone together, isn't it? Finally, for the first time. I've never seen anything like it. This is the biggest, biggest trade I've union march I've ever been on in 20 years. You need to support the student part as well as everything else. If everybody's together, then... It's bigger, louder. The more chance we're going to like get a word across, a message across there. The more chance people are going to listen to us. Soon. Hopefully, the politicians will get what they want in a peaceful protest, but they need to listen because time and time again, people have protested peacefully and no one listens. It seems that they, they say, oh, you can march down this street, you can say what you like. 500,000 people. They've got to listen to that. They have got to listen to it. But it was hard that day to know what to film let alone what people would listen to. Just to note that while we were inside the building in Fortnum and Mason, we were entirely peaceful, that we even cleaned up a little bit before we left. No, not interested in them. I'm just a mother who's marching for her children. I ended up at Piccadilly Circus. As one group sang the Internationale, around the corner, police were busy rounding up members of a breakaway protest in the Queen's Greengrocers. It's all lies, it's lies, the Chief Inspector promised me! This is the largest rally of disabled people in living memory, and I think that's something to be really proud of. Hi everybody and welcome to the Great Pensions Revolt of 2011. Please keep moving straight ahead and take a left hand turn. The unions and disability campaigners took the protests into the summer with events that were altogether more ordered. They got a point, but at the end of the day nothing's going to come of it, we know all this. You know Cameron's got to go and he's got to go and he? Bring down the government. Make the bankers pay. Use it for fucking target practice. For we side. also hold out an hand of solidarity to the Greek working class. 
It is a small minority of unions that have gone ahead uh, with action. I think it is irresponsible. I don't believe it's fair. I think you're more in line with the private sector, you mean? <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that where you think it should be, though? But don't you think that's right? Well, do you have a, are you happy with your pension? My pension? Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not happy with my pension. But, so, so you want everyone to be in the same boat, though? No. You're putting words into my mouth and I don't yeah, like it. So can you just, just go away, please? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. F-A-F-T-E-D. That's the awful, the way they're treating these able people. You can swear if you like. You can, yeah. The parameters of protest now seemed very fixed. This is fucking bad. I was beginning to feel like we were all playing our roles in a benign spectacle. That all changed in August. Tell them to move. We're all at equal rights. We're all equal. Yeah, tell me to move. Tell the white man to move. This all started because these feds shot my boy in it. Now everyone's running right. But obviously, I was in Tottenham the other day. Now I'm here, fam. Needs today, tomorrow, somewhere else. Finished, innit? There's no more yes or no more yes. Just stand in the Come on, I'm filming it for you guys. I saw it. The man who attacked me came back moments later. He told me he hadn't been trying to steal my camera. It was that he didn't want me telling the wrong story. It felt too dangerous to film much of the violence during the riots, so instead I focused on talking to people who were out on the streets. Half of the people in this community have all got a story to tell about the fucking police and individual brutality. I've got my story, Raga's got his story, and half of the man them on this road have got a story about brutality, an individual personal story. So when they come out on our streets and try and tell us we must do what we're told and we're all together, what the fuck are they expecting going nowhere? You know what, you see when you treat people like animals, they, be, they start behaving like animals. All of what's going on right now with riots, it's all the result of inequality that's been building up and building up since the 90s. Inequality, the, the, the gap between incomes has been growing and we have to be at the bottom of the fucking line. And we have to experience all the pain and fucking frustration and we've got the police telling us what the fuck to do. Remember, shop, consume, do as you're told and you'll be safe. The people who broke those rules were quickly branded mindless criminals, the worst of Britain. Those who defended their property like the circus shopkeepers of Dalston, were made into the heroes. At the time, it didn't feel so simple. The following night, I travelled up to Birmingham, where there were serious fears of race riots after three young Asian men had been killed. We will not be violent and react. We are capable, but we're not going to do it. And why? Why? Because the three people, the three people who died, they died nobly. I said peacefully, march. Let's not do that because houses can still be looted. It's better to go home. You want know, all the area to know that we're here. You need to wake them up and show them peaceful march, no looting. Peaceful march. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know the ripple effect. It not only takes us one person to do something out of turn. The way we react now, what we do now, will mirror tomorrow headlines. They killed them for free, bro. They've killed them for free. Make sure you're not marching in the name of the three brothers that died. Because if you're gonna march here yeah, in their name and you're rioting here, yeah, it's a disgrace. Man, no march. That's it. Go home, bro. Thanks for coming. Show your respect. That's enough, bro. Everybody go. 
The Occupy London movement landed on the steps of St Paul's by chance. Everything else about it felt very deliberate, a determination not to go home at the end of the day, to speak with a single voice of consensus, and not to let a story be imposed on them. The crowd turned against the media on day one, when the cameras mobbed Julian Assange. After a year in which what happened on protests often felt of secondary importance to how it was portrayed, Occupy were determined to decide their own message. Until today, the reclamation of the public space around St Paul's by protesters has been confused. It was better theatre than politics. Occupy London members had just been told that a list of their demands had been leaked to the press before being ratified by their General Assembly. Do we think we should get behind it? Uh, any blocks? Got to be one. History is full of people who think they've had the answers and tried to impose it on other people. And what they've forgotten is that it's involving people in the process that's the real source of democracy, not what you say at the end. It's the first time that we haven't done something and then just gone off to the pub. My personal goal is to be here 18 months from now. I ask you to ratify this. Let's not stay here for two weeks and be evicted without landing a blow on the body politic of that corrupt institution. How clear are we all on what consensus actually is? Or are we confusing consensus with voting? Those who agree. Those who disagree. There simply is not a way to reach a consensus that is in line with the process that we all agreed on here and now. Everybody has got completely conflicting views and it does pretty much tell us a lot about why the process is so important. Consensus is not just majority vote, it's where everybody agrees. You're the people that teach our kids, heal our sick, care for our vulnerable and our elderly, encourage our youth, clean our streets, collect our refuge. You are the people that create the very fabric of the civilised communities in which we live. How dare they attack you? I want you to do one thing. Believe. Believe in your values. Believe in your unions. Believe in working class solidarity and justice will prevail. Good luck, comrades. November was billed as another big month of action. Unions walked out over pensions for a second time. Occupy squatted a disused office block. And the students marched again. This time, everybody was well behaved. I saw videos of last year and it looked more violent. Like, it, it, nothing really kicked off today. A year on, there was no three-way dance, no optimistic anger, and no demands on Parliament. In its place, a different, bigger demand and a big, open question. If five people to smash stuff up, it makes the news. You know, that is the inconvenient truth of peaceful protests. If you want this change to be effective, if you want it to be peaceful, then we need you. All we're saying really is come and let's have a discussion about what the people power that we're meant to already have might mean.